In this episode, we are doing cabin to cabin backcountry skiing. We are in one of Norway's beautiful national parks and we're going to visit two different DT cabins. We're going to go through a snow blizzard. So sit back and come along on a journey with us. So, cabin to cabin, what are we talking about? Basically, on day one, we ski a short distance to the first cabin, stay overnight, then on day two, we ski onwards to the next cabin and do the same thing again, all the time with all of our clothes, food, and supplies on our backs. We're doing backcountry skiing for the first time. We're doing uh, two cabins together with our sponsor, DT, which is the Norwegian Tourist Association. Yeah. How are you feeling, Angus? I'm feeling confident. We've done a bit of skiing before, but these things look different to all the other ones, so I'm really keen to see how we go on them. True, because they're, they're a bit wider than uh, cross country skis, and they also have skins you can put on. So, within this video, we're going to learn a bit about the backcountry, how it works. How we do long, do some falls. Yeah, there's a lot of snow, so <laughs> it's not going to hurt as much. So, DNT, actually the Norwegian Trekking Association, sorry Thomas, founded about 150 years ago. They develop and promote tourism all over Norway. There's about 300,000 members and they own about 550 cabins all over Norway. And essentially, they promote environmentally friendly activities for everyone. There is a small membership fee you have to pay for the year. And in our opinion, it's well worth it. And then the fee to use the cabins is discounted. So to find out more, check out the DNT website. Here you can see Thomas demonstrating how to put the skins on the bottom of those skis. We'll learn a bit more about that later. Oh, and there's Jordan making sure his pants are on properly. That's the famous Jordenheimen mountain range you can see in the background there. Anyway, we started the trip on Friday evening after work with a fairly relaxed two to three hour ski trip to cabin number one, and then a longer trip planned for days two and three. When you've been going at it for what, six hours that we have now, there's nothing better than finding a bit of food or cookies here. <laughs> also, I'd really recommend these maps. You can buy them at the DNT shop or on their website and they do them for pretty much every area of Norway. So if you're heading out on the trip, I definitely recommend getting one of these DNT maps. They're fantastic. I think it's important to say that at this point we felt very much like Amundsen crossing the Arctic to discover the North Pole some 300 years ago, but in reality we'd only gone about five minutes from the car park. So here we are refueling and warming up after a long hard day in the cold, probably also arguing about whose fault it was that it took us eight hours instead of the expected four hours to get to the first cabin. Always remember to sign the guest book at these DT cabins. If you've put in the hard work to get there, you may as well at least get your name in the book. I don't think you're going to find any food in there, Thomas. Are you a bit, are you a bit worried you've not brought enough with you? No, uh, we actually have enough, but what was actually quite cool is that you've got a little, a little house shop in uh, some other DT cabins. I actually don't need to bring food uh, in these kind of cabins. So there was our home for the night and as you can see, very much only accessible by skiing. So we've got a good night's sleep in a lovely warm cabin. Thank you, DNT. And we're fueled up on tour mat and porridge for breakfast. Yeah, we've got 15k to, to cover today. So we're starting with a little downhill, so we're gonna go without the skins under the ski so we can get a bit of glide. And then uh, maybe we'll stop and put them on later on. Hopefully not too much glide. Yeah, no. <laughs> and they're off. Wow, look at us go. Majestic, like a herd of polar bears crossing the North Pole. What's this? Our first major obstacle, 
How will the boys fare going across the frozen lake? That's three safely across. Just the fourth one to go. Whoops. It's just done the downhill from up there. Now it goes a bit up. And this is the time we put on these skins. They're quite smooth one way, but the other way, uh, grippy and uh, stringy. And it's the first time we're using it, but I think it's quite cool. They do provide a little bit of extra resistance, even when you're on the flat and going down as well. So if you really want to get maximum speed, starting to going downhill, a lot of people say actually remove the skis. We've got the skins off now, and there's definitely getting but some more there's glides. actually a middle ground, because yeah. you can actually wax in between. So where the skins are very grippy, if you just wax a little bit, you just get the in-between. I think that's next time something we do. If anyone out there's tried using the skins, let us know. What's your preference? Skins, wax, or nothing at all? Oi, yeah. look at him go. Look at it. I think it's fair to say the fatigue was setting in at this point. We'd been out for quite some hours. It was blooming cold. We weren't really sure where we were going. So we were starting to get quite excited for a nice warm DNT cabin and hopefully some nice warm food as well. Hmm, I wonder what was in that sled. We've got a little snow storm, snow blizzard going. So starting to really could be completely wide out as you maybe see on, on the lovely beard. The ice beards are back, but it's beautiful conditions even though, because um feels like really this adventure, this exploration. Yeah, we are about 5K from the second cabin. So uh, looking forward to that part. One of the main credits to DNT is just how accessible they've made this because we're out here on the weekends and it's just it's one of the best ways you can just switch off from work. You just get in your own bubble, you just walk and you just look forward to that lovely heated stocked up cabin. <laughs> now we're on a proper expedition. We have a complete wide out. I've never experienced this in my life, but it's like everything is it's complete wide. You have no idea where you're going. Luckily, we have the sticks of the volunteers who put it here, so we do know where we're going, but it's just everything is completely wide. I've never experienced this. It's, just, uh, it's quite cool. Like the background here is the snow, snow and skies. Now these sticks that Thomas is referring to are actually just wooden canes that the DNT volunteers put out across the trails in about 20 meter intervals to help keep skiers like us on the right path. What I just noticed is when, when I took my phone up is that I look like fucking Two-Face over here. So it's quite obvious of which side the wind is coming from. I'm tipping it's this side. <laughs> So in the last 24 hours, we've actually seen three of the DNT volunteers out here. So you, even though you're out and about in the wilderness, you feel quite safe, secure, and you know, there's always someone around to help you out. We're really happy because the cabin is right here. What the lovely surprise is that we've been trying to look up for a mountain, which is Oskamp Kampen Mountain, but we haven't been able to see it due to the weather. So we've been thinking, okay, we maybe have three to four K left of walking, but then we come around this corner and the caverns appear. So very happy. So thank you very much to DNT, who is our sponsor for today's episode. So we've made it to cabin number two. West Kampen, as you can see. Um, it's quite funny actually, because there's 19 of us here right now, which apparently is a record the most people they've ever had. But I don't think there's 19 beds. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> some of us are going to be sleeping on the floor. Um, I mean, to be honest, I think uh, we've slept in worse places, but um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how we all fit. Yeah, and the fun thing is you see if you pan the camera a bit, like, ski is all over, because that's the, the only way to get here is 
yeah, but it's skiing and there's a big mountain behind us, but we can't really see it because of the, the whiteout that's happening. Yeah. But a lovely beer. We've got a beer. People are friendly and happy, so it's perfect. Now, some of you might be thinking, hmm, this is a bit strange, turning up at an isolated cabin in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of strangers who you've never met, maybe even a bit dangerous. But in our experience, at least, there's always a very good vibe. Everyone's like-minded, out for the same reasons, which is just enjoying the nature, getting some exercise and having a good time. So what's the situation, Angus? Right now we've got... Now it's, it's just escalated to 21 people. <laughs> to 12 beds <laughs> and a dog and a dog <laughs> that cannot sleep outside i do yeah. like dogs so it goes. maybe i can call some in a dog yeah. what do you think about the situation <clears throat> well it's um <laughs> it's gonna be cozy in here <laughs> what is going on right now <laughs> What would you say your mate is doing at the moment, Alistair? Uh, so Jordan has this thing where like, he can only take selfies if he gets the best possible angle. <laughs> <laughs> this is a British thing. He's, yeah, he's very like, precious about the lighting. It has to be the perfect <laughs> light. It worked. <laughs> Second portion, Ali. Oh, lovely. I can't get enough of it. I'm going to start eating this back at home. Also. <laughs> We've got sleeping situation and the one in the kitchen. And then the boys are snucked up at the sofa. John has been challenged a bit today. I'm not coming back. <laughs> We can't stick around too long because we've got another big day of skiing ahead. And in fact, there's a few DNT specific rules. One of them is that you're actually only allowed to stay one night at a time. So you can't pitch up at these cabins planning on staying in the same place for a whole week. The idea is that you move on uh, night to night. So you arrive, you stay one night, and then you're supposed to leave the next day. You can go to a different cabin, of course, but you're only supposed to stay in each cabin for maximum one night. When we arrived yesterday, it was a complete like snow blizzard. Today, lovely mountain, which is the Oskampen. And if we look over here, which is, in my opinion, quite special and unique, it's just this landscape, like almost like a dune landscape of just snow and small mountains around. And um, yeah, it's the only way to get here is by skis and in the winter. This is the main cabin here where we were sleeping last night. And then there's also the second cabin just over there with I think another four beds and the toilet as well. Of course, when you're out in these extreme conditions, injuries can happen. But thankfully, this DNT cabin is equipped with its very own nurse. <laughs> I'm not sure that Jordan would survive a seven to eight day trip like this. Jordan doesn't know desire to do it. Excuse me, Tati, you're listening. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. What I think is very unique with this DT concept is that you pay a little subscription fee a year. When you have access with this key, it unlocks. 550 different cabins, like the one we're accessing now. Basically, just plug the key in, unlock it, and you got into a cabin. And there are 550 of these around, spread out all of Norway. Very beautiful ones. DNT is also our sponsor for today's episode, so we thank them very much because it's uh, it's amazing to be out and do and get into access. Day three, the final stretch, we're going home now. We've uh, had a good night's sleep, we're going to the cabin, made some new friends, and weather's looking pretty good. There's actually some fresh snow though, so that could cause us some problems. So we're gonna keep the skins on for now, uh, but hopefully we'll get to take those off and enjoy some of the nice downhills. How are you feeling? I think I'm ready. I'm ready to get home, but it's been a nice trip. And day three, come at us.
heading back home. So far, so good. I actually just stopped to de-layer a little bit because it's been so warm. I had to take some layers off, which is uh, a nice problem to have, I think. Today is so different to yesterday. Yesterday we had a whiteout. Today we just can see for miles. Yeah. You just feel very small in a very good way in this landscape. I love it. Very much so. So if you're wondering how easy it is to get equipment like this, we have one of the co-sponsors for this episode is Waterfella Explore, which is where you can get equipment like this backcountry. They've provided us with lovely skis, skins and poles. So if you are in Norway and you don't own backcountry equipment like we do yet, Waterfella Explore is a very, very cool concept where you really can rent on something. Easy. 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 Real easy. Okay. If you're watching the video and you're not subscribed, I think you should consider hitting that subscribe button. Because that lets us do cool stuff like this and also it helps us risk Alistair's life skiing backwards. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 oh, actually, fuck, I pressed off just as I fell. No! Nice. Yeah. Ali, what do you got in that pack? What do, what's getting you through? I feel like I've got everything in here, it weighs so much. Um, but starting off, of course, with the wool base layers, very important. Um, and then waterproof layers over the top. We've got a mid layer and a very light shell that's waterproof because you've kind of got to cover off all bases in terms of temperature. One minute you might be too cold, the next minute you're too warm. A bit like now, actually, we're so warm, we have to stop and take off some layers. Um, so yeah, got all the clothes. Yeah, I think survival stuff's also key. Um, when you're out in the back country like this, having a snow shovel, yeah. med kits, bit of lights in case you're out a bit dark, mm -hmm. very much helpful. And then also maybe some treats. Yeah, we did bring a few sneaky luxuries along with us. I mm -hmm. uh, don't know if we should admit this, but we've got a couple of beers in there. Um, Thomas even bought a bottle of champagne actually, which was lovely. Um, and that means that the bags are definitely feeling a lot lighter on the way home than they did on the way up there. Exactly. Um, but, uh, but what, what would you guys bring then? If, if you're going on one of these trips, any, any special treats or any survival stuff we may have missed out on? Yeah, let us know in the comments. Typical Angus, always giving me the dud ones. And I mean, this is one of the reasons it's recommended, as we have done, to bring a shovel, because you probably can't really tell, but there's been so much snowfall. It's incredibly deep here. And if for some reason you were to fall through and fall down, not only can you not get up, but you could actually quickly uh, become uh, become buried in the snow. So always have a shovel on your back and have friends close by because uh, yeah, you don't want to be getting trapped in here, that's for sure. If you're wondering how much snow there actually is where we are, Here's a street sign. Alistair's making his own glide over here in his own special way, aren't you? A bit dehydrated, it looks like solo soup is coming out of me. <laughs> so what's quite nice about this is that having put in quite a lot of effort over the last few days and uh, not too many steep hills but certainly some big climbs we're now going pretty much downhill all the way so it is lovely just you want to take those ski uh, skins off the bottom of the skis and just glide down not too steep so nothing scary nothing too intense just a nice casual glide down although woohoo putting up a bit of speed now actually which is very nice oh, no effort just letting the gravity take you along. This is what it's all about. We're almost getting back home and this trip has been very, very amazing. Completely agree. Yeah, so, I mean, actually I feel quite yeah, lucky and, and grateful, especially to you guys for watching and subscribing because it makes us possible to do Cool trips like this 
and we hope to do way more and also more extreme exploration adventures. Oh, don't tell that to my blisters right now. <laughs> oh, they fucking hurt as me. <laughs> They're gigantic, my blisters at the moment. <laughs> and with that, the first cabin to cabin ski trip is complete. Day three, made it back. The sun's even come out for us. How are you feeling, boys? Beautiful. I mean, honestly, first off, thanks to our sponsor, DT, and also Rutherford Explore making this happen. I'm, I'm very grateful and the car's right there so I'll, I'll just skate straight to it. You feel exhausted but it's the best type of feeling. So. 100%. This certainly won't be our last cabin to cabin ski trip that's for sure. So thanks for watching and remember please like and subscribe.